Welcome to this multi-part tutorial series, where we will go over some more advanced techniques on how to use anchor points in your projects. This series is a follow-up of our basic anchor point series, which you can also find on this channel. In this first video, we will go over on how to create this really nice stitch effect that you can use on any type of fabric. This will include creating the actual stitches using a built-in stitch brush, along with these really nice dents that you often see that come along with the stitches. So that will be it for this chapter and let's dive right in. So, what are anchor points? Anchor points are a powerful feature that lets you reuse a part of your layer stack. This means that you can define a mask or layer once and reference it dynamically in other layers. If you change the anchor point, all references are updated as well letting you work smarter and faster. Okay, so we have this really nice model over here that we are going to use for our example. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a simple layer. The reason for this is because we are going to use a special brush that has built-in settings for our stitches. So what you want to do is in your assets, simply go to brushes and type in stitch over here. And then we have this one. If you double click on it, it will activate and then if you go into your properties you will see a bunch of different settings here and you can already see that if i would drag this around here see you can see that these are the typical stitches that you often see now what i'm going to do is first of all i'm gonna go ahead and just remove the seam in between so that we only have these stitches like this and not that thin line in between next to that i feel they are maybe a little bit small so you can always just go up here and set the size a little bit bigger. Or of course you can do it up here or you can right click and do it up here. So many ways to do that. I also often like to just click and hold shift because then I can often create nice straight lines like this. So let's see, this is looking pretty good. Yeah, I quite like this. So let's use this one as a base and then start by building the rest of our structure. First of all, let's go ahead and just call this stitch underscore base and then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and go up here and add an anchor point so this is the whole goal of this tutorial with this anchor point we can still reference the shape and we can manipulate it using fill layers and a bunch of other stuff and that's what we're going to do now we are first going to go ahead and give it some interesting denting around the stitches as if it has been pushed inside of the fabric the way that you can do that is go ahead and add a fill layer and let's just call this um, the form, for example. And honestly, we only really need our height map for this. So just go ahead and turn everything off except for our height map. And then set our height map into the minus. I don't yet know how much, but we will see that soon enough. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go up here to our masks and create a black mask. Once we've done that, we can start by referencing our stitches over here and we can extract the mask from it. The way that you do that is simply go up here, add a fill, and then if you click on your grayscale, you can see your anchor points up here, which will have our stitch base. So we basically grab it. Now one thing we need to do is in the alpha behavior, we want to extract specifically the alpha, which will be the stitches. And as you can see here, you can see that that gives quite a big impact. Honestly, for the rest, we don't really need to do much. If you want, you can always play around with your levels to make it stronger or less strong. But what we are going to do is we are going to blur it. Because if we blur it, it will just give us like a nice transition. However, I'm going to use a slightly special technique. Because if we are just blurring this once, here, let's add a filter. And add a blur. You can see that the transition oops, is never so nice. It's a bit difficult to see maybe for you, but I can see like a very clear blur look. And I don't really like that. But a cool tip that you can do is if you go ahead and set this blur a little bit stronger to maybe like 0 0.6. And if we then go ahead and add another blur, so add another filter with a blur like this. And this one to 0 0.5, you can see that the transition becomes a little bit nicer. And then at this point, all we need to do is just play around with our height. To get like a stronger or less strong transition as you can see. I'm going to go for probably like minus 0 0.3 seems about fine. Well, actually let's do minus 0 0.4. There we go. 
Now, something that we can also do is we can also give it some color. This is once again very easy. All we need to do is just add a new fill layer over here. Let's call this color. And let's only add like a color and some roughness. So for roughness, maybe like set it down a little bit just to make it a little bit duller. And for your color, you can just go ahead and grab whatever you want. Let me just use red for now just because it's a very clear color. Then all you want to do is we want to once again mask our stitches using an anchor point. We can do this by adding a black mask along with a fill. And once again in this fill we just want to go ahead and we want to grab our stitch base. Now don't forget to set the alpha behavior to extract alpha because else once again it will just give us like a gradient look or a grayscale look. And now I'm just going to use my black levels to basically push my color back a little bit because it was bleeding out a little bit. And I don't really like that. So just give it like a nice balance. And there you go. So at this point you would be ready to start by just going in and painting everything. Now one cool trick that you can do. So right now if we go back and we would paint this. For example let's say that I do like this. Uh, then it is quite annoying because we have our, over here our laces that are sitting in the way. What you can do is you can always go down here. And you can basically turn off specific models. So we can click off the laces. Like this on these bits. And now if I would go ahead and I would paint here. You can see that they are grayscale. Uh, to get out of this mode simply click on your layer again. So now if you would paint. It would simply ignore this specific model. See. So what I will do is I will just go ahead and start by painting these specific stitches over here. And then we will go ahead and continue. Okay so here we go. I just went ahead and quickly painted in some stitches. Just to show you the power of it. And now what I want to show you is that we can. Thanks to anchor points, also use different brushes within this layer, and it will all simply be deformed the same way. So what we can do, for example, is let's say that we create like some sort of a seam line. If we go ahead and grab our basic hard brush over here, and just double click on it, and let's set the size a little bit smaller, maybe something like this. And don't forget, right now, your stitches are still over here uh, assigned. So you just want to go ahead and scroll down. And just press the X button on this material. Now what you can see is if we just paint in a simple white line. Let's say over here. You get this seam line. And you can basically go ahead and just have like the same deformation on this. So this is quite nice. Now what I would recommend is of course play around a bit with the size if you do stuff like this. Here let's go like a little bit smaller. And then you can see that one. And let's say that I want to also place another one. Um. Let's say from like here to for example over here. And then my sti my laces are a little bit in the way. So I might need to just quickly go in and do this. But there we go. So that way you can also just create like some interesting looking seams and stuff like that. And that was about it for this tutorial. I hope that you find it useful. And I hope to see you next time.